And this wise man in 1986 has the pleasure to bring to the city of Montreal and the province of the Quebec, okay, the Stanley Cup. As I mentioned earlier, it's not a lot of coach who had won Stanley Cup in his life. And this morning you have the privilege to not only to, to hear someone who is an ambassador of the Itritis Society, but is a good friend of mine and a good friend of you guys, a good friend of all the people who are fans of the Montreal Canadian. I'm pleased to introduce you, the former head coach of the Montreal Canadian, who had won the Stanley Cup in 1986, Coach Jean-Pierre. Merci, uh, Mark. I hope you have a good day. This is a great day for me because uh, my background is in school. I'm a graduate from the University of Sherbrooke in physical education and uh, I got my master's degree from uh, Michigan State in uh, organization and administration of uh, physical education. So uh, I just happened to, uh, to be lucky in life that I coached the Canadians. It's not something that I planned because uh, a lot of you are asking the same questions. Why are you, are you not coaching anymore? You win the Stanley Cup and you disappear. I'm going to tell you this. My dream was to coach in the Olympics and when I was marching from my country in Sarajevo, I was in heaven. And all of a sudden, I'm having dinner with Marcel Aubu one night at the Nordiques. I was having dinner the next night with Serge Chavard and Ron Curry. And I decided to choose the Canadian because of my idol, Jean Beliveau. Because when I was in Moncton at the University of Moncton, I never heard of the Nordiques. Never. So when we won the cup in 86, I met God and I said, this is it. Never in my life I'm going to be fired with 103 points. I was in nomination for coach of the year. And I, was, I, I didn't have a team to coach in Toronto. I didn't want to go to the awards night. And Ziegler called me and said, Jean, you got to come because you're in nomination. Can you imagine I would have been named coach of the year with no club being fired? So that was kind of, that was kind of a shame. And uh, I said, uh, because I'm like one of you, uh, like the teachers here, I said, hey, I can do something else in my life than uh, coaching because I had my Stanley Cup ring. And uh, I went to the Nordiques as a GM, assistant GM, sorry. And then uh, coach uh, Ron Lapointe got cancer and I jumped behind the bench to help out and after that I was finished. And I decided to do something else, you know, uh, to get more experiences in my life. Coach uh, different teams. I went to San Francisco to start uh, a team in the International Hockey League. Uh, uh, I had some great experiences, even if they were not the best. But at least I traveled the world. I went to Geneva in Switzerland. I coached the Israeli hockey team. Can you imagine? <laughs> People thought that there was only camels in uh, Israel, but we have hockey in Israel. And we, we brought the team from Division 3 to Division 1. They even made a, a movie about this. So that's, a, that's very interesting. But great experiences. The Canadians are great. I met uh, the God. I met God. And after that, I said, this is it. I got to find some uh, new uh, excitement in my life. And one of the excitement is to be here today in the classroom because this, for me it's like a classroom with talking uh, about arthritis. Uh, I didn't know too much about arthritis since I met uh, Marc Baldalou, but uh, since I'm uh, a, sp a spoke person for arthritis, 
I found out that in my my own family, I got two nieces. Didn't they're just 30 years old, and they got arthritis. One is pregnant with her second child, and some morning, this is what my sister told me, because she never talks about it. My niece never talked about it, and she can't wait. She can't get up because uh, her arthritis is in her, her ankles. Apparently, it's very painful. So, at least she doesn't work outside the house. So now she raised her, her baby, and uh, she's full-time mother. But can you imagine you're uh, you're going to work every day, and you you cut with that? Uh, uh, is it disease? Disease, sickness, and you have to bear, bear down every day because you don't know how you're going to finish your day. Uh, when I was the coach of the Canadians or the Nordics, I could feel that some of my players were not giving their best. And uh, you know, when it happens, you, you have to go and uh, talk to them and say, hey, that was a, a shitty practice today. What's happening? I said, um, no, they're going to tell you all kinds of stuff. Like, uh, you know, I had a rough day yesterday with the family. They don't want to talk about this. And I'm going to give you a good, a good reason. If management knows that one of the players got arthritis or has got some uh, joint problems, they're going to ask him to go and see the doctor, and all of a sudden the doctor is going to tell him, hey, he's got arthritis. Don't, don't re-sign the guy. It's too much money involved, so players don't talk about this, uh, their situation. And every day it becomes more and more painful. I remember I was uh, in the Olympics in Sarajevo in 1984. Kevin Dineen had the dislocated shoulder. And Kevin Dineen, who's a, who's a coach now with the Panthers, had a 16-year career in the National Hockey League. And his shoulder would pop out. Every ship he went on the ice because his style was to play physical. So those who are old enough to remember when he played for the, the Whalers, he almost, he almost beat us. He was playing on the line with uh, uh, Ron Francis and um, John Anderson. What a line. Now, Kevin Denis could score 40 goals. Every time he came off the ice, they had to replace his shoulder. So today, today Kevin Denis is, is, is doesn't have a good shoulder, there's no question that he's got some arthritis. But I found out after I was finished coaching from my ex players and they were not very old, he said, Coach, I can't even get up in the morning on, in the first place. You know, it takes me time, you know, one leg at a time off, off the bed. So, and I go gradually to make sure that the I can't function for the, the resident. If I want to go get up quick, I fall on my face. But they, those guys, you know, they don't want to talk about that because for, for them it's, it's a shame because they've seen our idols and uh, they don't have any problem, everything is fine, they got money and so forth. But it's not true. Their life is miserable because they never consulted. As soon as you have a problem, you should see a doctor and explain what's happening. Because of the money involved, my employers didn't do that, and today, they don't walk with a cane, but close. And that could have been resolved easily by the medication and so forth. Anyways, that's, uh, that's the kind of uh, message that I want to give you today. I don't want to take too much of your time. But um, I'm, uh, 
I'm involved because I decided to come and talk to you today about what happened in my career as a coach. What's happening today with my niece's brother, brother-in-law, uh, uncle's aunt, and so forth. Everybody, everybody comes out the woodwork because of the... Uh, they know now that I'm a sports person about uh, arthritis. It's not a question of uh, being young. You're young, you could have arthritis. Athletes, athletes have uh, osteoarthritis because they don't, they don't consult, they don't see doctors because money is too much. If, you, if you're in a situation that you know somebody that feels pain, it's your, it's all, it's, it's almost compulsory that you tell them, hey, you go and see the doctors right away. Players that uh, play a rough game and all of a sudden, you know, they, uh, they end up with uh, injuries that could uh, be uh, osteoarthritis. How tough it is, you know, to play that kind of a game, and uh, usually the players don't talk about those kind of problems. And uh, finally, when their uh, career is over, they uh, they have after effects because they were not treated pro properly, because they don't talk about it. They don't talk about it because they they're afraid that they're going to shorten their career. So uh, experience, you know, off the ice. Uh, in arthritis in my family, uh, but mainly around uh, why we have uh, so many people, you know, that play sports that have uh, all kinds of arthritis. So this is the the main topic about because uh, people uh, people feel that it's uh, it's a sickness because it's related to ages. It's related to uh, old people, and it's not. In my family, for example, uh, my two nieces, they're 30 years old, and they got arthritis. So as soon as uh, somebody feels something wrong in his body, he should be talking about it, you know, and go to see uh, and get medical attention. The Arthritis Society of Canada is there since uh, 63 years. We are throughout the uh, Canada. We are we are there in the 10 provinces, and we offer programs and services to the uh, arthritic uh, patient. We have uh, arthritis self uh, management program. We do forums. We do kiosks. We do information session as today, and uh, we have an outline too that is there to answer all the questions that patients might have that suffer from arthritis. It's really important for us because we want to uh, increase the awareness of people, of young adults, because arthritis doesn't affect only adults, it affects uh, young adults too, and even child. So if we can uh, increase awareness to say, hey, if you are in pain for uh, six consecutive weeks that you have uh, morning stiffness, that you have a slow, a slow and jump. Uh, go see your GP. Don't wait. Go see your GP and ask uh, to see what is there. It might be something insignificant, but if it's the arthritis, it must be treated as soon as possible to don't have sequel from that.